Good afternoon, everyone. I am Sunil Rajguru, editor of PC Quest and your host for today's live webinar. A warm welcome to you all, and thank you for joining us for our discussion today around Empower Your Engineering by IBM Software Solutions. We will have a few presentations followed by a question and answer session. You can start sharing your questions from now itself on the chat window. So I'll I'll uh, begin with uh, the you know a short introduction to set the pace for the day. Now you, I feel that the digital acceleration is the theme of 2020, right? Now if you see whenever any crisis comes with mankind, right? So at one side is a crisis and one side is a tragedy, but we always rise up above that and we upgrade ourselves, right? And usually you'll find whenever there's a crisis a technological acceleration uh, happens and the IT industry stands up and like upgrades the world, right? So Ashok, next slide, please. Yeah, so I mean, if you look at the biggest change that happened was uh, World War II, right? Ashok, previous slide, sorry. So if you look at, if you look at World War II, right? If you look at World War II, then at one side was a tragedy, was the war, millions of people getting killed. But a lot of people don't know that a technological acceleration happened at that time. So, you know, it's like on one side, we are taught that ENIAC was the first uh, computer, but actually technically something called Colossus, which was the first digital electronic programmable computer that came during World War II. Then secondly, if you see the Nazis, they threw an Enigma machine. And to break the Enigma machine codes, we uh, brute force was used and uh, cryptography really took on. And the cryptography techniques that were used during World War II are used to this present day. Then the Nazis started jamming all the allied uh, communications line. So to counter that, they came out with something called code division multiple access, which is CDMA. Now today, you know, a CDMA which has powered uh, the mobile uh, revolution. That is also came out of World War II. Again, rocketry. Whatever happened, uh, research during rocketry, that took forward. And NASA was a result of that. In fact, whatever the German rocket scientist research happened, NASA was based on that. That led to the satellite revolution. And uh, we have, you know, satellite revolutions have led to the satellite TV revolution, the GPS revolution, even jet planes, atomic energy. So many people don't realize that World War II had tremendous technological acceleration and interestingly ashok next slide uh, please so interestingly uh, today if you look at it is after world war ii uh, the maximum acceleration has happened is now so for example uh, for example uh, in world war ii you could call it technology technological acceleration in covid 19 i called it digital acceleration because you see, if you look at various uh, times of uh, mankind, sometimes one technology will accelerate, sometimes another will accelerate. What happens when multiple technologies uh, accelerate, right? Then at that time, it is uh, at that time, uh, what happens is you have to call it a great digital acceleration. Now, so for example, mobile workforce. Now the mobile workforce crossed 1 billion sometime back. Now it will cross 2 billion shortly. And your mobile is now, it's coming out like a supercomputer, right? Your mobile, if you look at your mobile apps, if you look at bandwidth, compute power, the mobile is already, it was great in the 2010s. It is going to the next level. I think the biggest success, success story has been collaboration tools. Collaboration tools, Zoom came in 2011. Cisco, WebEx, and so many, they came in the 2000s. But it is now that collaboration has taken off. The quality has improved. The collaboration tools, file sharing, they have gone on to the next level. Then another thing is bandwidth. People are watching Netflix. They are working. The amount of bandwidth has been huge. We are, we are, you know, uh, we are uh, uh, equipping with that. And even 5G may come soon as a result of that. Another thing is drones and connected cars. Drones and connected cars is also ready. The only thing that was holding them back was legislation that will happen. Another thing is no touch technology and social distancing. That is going to go to Philip to industry 4.0 and IOT devices. And also, of course, the thing that's going to stitch together is artificial intelligence. So we don't realize it now, but we'll realize it after a couple of years 
that this was a time of great opportunity this was a time of great acceleration and in terms of not only lifestyle changes but uh, technological acceleration this probably is the greatest fundamental shift since world war ii and we have to make the most of it and we are making the most of it okay so ashok next slide please so basically if you see uh, one thing is that one sector the automotive sector is going to really go far so you know we are having the concept of smart vehicles now we just think of you know when you look at the car you don't think much of technology but if you look at the automotive in industry and the smart vehicle industry then they are going to encompass every every technology that you can think of right so one is industry 4.0 as it is if you see during the manufacture of cars it is a very high tech process robots are used you know technological processes are used but uh, the automotive industry is ready to embrace industry 4.0 then you have iot devices all the cars are going to be equipped with iot devices that will help with insurance it will help with tracking then uh, we will finally have connected cars a connected cars is nothing but something which has a two way connection with the internet so if you have a car and you are connecting with the internet and the internet is connecting with you that is a connected car and that will also lead to driverless cars and all the operations will occur on the cloud so basically now the entire smart vehicle network is going to be on the cloud the cloud will know what it is doing the data will be going up and down and everything will be secure on the cloud and finally you can imagine what data will come out of it so data analytics will be used finally the smart vehicles will be an integral part of smart cities so if you look at smart cities it will have smart homes smart factories smart utilities and even the entire vehicular network you are going to have smart cars smart bikes smart vehicles smart transportation and that's going to be an integral seamless part of it so with that uh, i think i'll uh, end my presentation and uh, we can move on with the main topics of the webinar so our main presenters today will be sunil shantaram senior client specialist ibm and vivek buzrok senior architect trident but before that i would like to welcome rajneesh bhagat operations head and trident information systems so he will uh, give a brief presentation so over to you rajneesh Thank you, Sunil. Um, is my presentation okay? Is my presentation slide uh, visible? we can see your presentation slide perfect all right um, good morning everybody and <clears throat> welcome again to the webinar on empower your engineering by ibm software solution co-hosted by cyber media ibm india and trident information systems see as uh, sunil has already indicated uh, every challenge brings an opportunity with it the COVID-19 threat also brings an opportunity for us to recalibrate our personal and professional priorities and focus more on meaningful and profitable tasks. Adoption of suitable technology solution to make our business processes easier and to achieve our business objectives faster is one such priority which has emerged prominently in recent times. Agenda of today's webinar is to reintroduce to you uh, one such solution from IBM, which caters to generic and industry specific requirements related to smart uh, uh, system development for smart devices. Mr. Sunil Shantaram from IBM and Mr. Vivek Buzrook from Trident will take us through the relevant details shortly. But before I invite Sunil and Vivek, I would like to quickly share some information about uh, Trident information with all of you. Rajneesh sir, Ashok here. Sorry Please. to interrupt you. Uh, if you can make your uh, slide in few view mode. Yes. I'm sorry. Thank you, okay. Okay. Thank you sir. 
all right all right see trident has completed its teenage years recently nurturing relationship uh, of of uh, years with ibm india and couple of more technology partners and numerous enterprise customer has brought us to the stage of developing our own proprietary it solutions now a grateful journey with our technology partners like ibm india who have kept us aligned to market trends and have also kept us on the learning path for their software products to meet devops iot analytics and other business requirements it has also been a thankful journey with our small medium large customers um you know multiple uh, industry segments like manufacturing logistics hospitality retail uh, financial services and so on and so forth for their continued trust in our capability and for giving us more and more challenges to address through innovative it solution so unless we are challenged by situations by customer innovation doesn't happen uh, the betterment doesn't happen so that has been very very important contribution from our customer to trident growth now uh, with nearly 20 years of experience of delivering it solution to customer in india west asia africa asia pacific some countries in europe we have imbibed the thought of think global and act local in all our practices now um quick view of our relationship journey with ibm uh, trident became ibm partner way back in year 2003 after rational software company was acquired by ibm trident was already in the market for rational's methodology and technology solutions for iterative and incremental software development but after ibm's acquisition rational software consolidated its leadership status many times over and with ibm support Trident became one of the favored consulting partner for rational solution in the market. Over the period of next four five years, Trident scaled up to include few more solutions from IBM Software Group in its offering to the customers. Prominent ones being brands like Lotus, Websphere, and Tivoli. Another incremental growth contribution came from Telelogic's acquisition by IBM, which expanded the scope of software development life cycle to embedded systems over the period of next 5 6 years while continuing with elm solutions and itm solutions trident started addressing few new challenges from the customer all using ibm software driven solutions among among others customer expectation during that phase were prominently related to data analytics and artificial intelligence solutions to address their specific business challenges and but we'll share the details of such solution in some other forum with changing times over the period of last few years trident's focus has gradually shifted to two solution stacks from ibm first one being system engineering and iot and second being data analytics and artificial intelligence systems engineering is what we will be talking about in detail today just a you know a view of select customers um you know these are few names we could accommodate in a single slide uh, customers who are using ibm elm solution uh, procured supported consulted through trident and this is a indicative list only the customer from various uh, business segments ranging from equipment manufacturing to professional services are the users of elm solutions both in public and private sectors we are particularly proud to have worked with prominent government entities in defense sector including drdo labs defense public sector undertakings and all the three divisions of indian armed forces and many more of course see uh, we are defined by what we do Uh, borrowing a dialogue from a popular Hollywood movie, and what defines Trident is uh, these three guiding principles: creating value for our customers in all our engagements, fulfilling our co commitments to customer at all costs, and collaborating with customers and partners for continuous mutual growth. 
and our relationship with customers lasting for more than 5 10 15 years are you know supportive of our uh, value set which drives us on various engagements with the customer i thank you again for taking our time to be with us today and i urge you to be attentive to very informative sessions from sunil and vivek post their respective session we'll appreciate your active participation in q and a session over to you sunil Thank you, Rajneesh, uh, for the introduction. And uh, thank you, Sunil, for uh, sharing the innovation uh, which has happened in the history and why we are here. So on that note, um, I will start my presentation. Once you can see my presentation, please can follow me back. OK, are you able to see my presentation? You can see Not it. Yet. You can proceed. Oh, no, we can, I can see it, yeah. Okay. Good morning, everyone, once again, and thank you for joining us this uh, morning. And I'm hoping that this session will be uh, informative. And during the presentation, if you have any questions, please post it on the chat. We will definitely have question answer session in the end of the session. And also we have logical two uh, breaks in between. Uh, if time permits, we will definitely take that breaks and take up the questions in uh, accordance to the slides which has been going through. So. As we are topic of uh, discussion today is on automotive industry, and without saying anything, automotive dis uh, the industry is a multidiscipline industry where mechanical, electrical, and software all three goes hand in hand in terms of building a complex system. As Sunil was mentioning about the innovation, what has happened in the car manufacturing, country, car manufacturing industry, and so on, is going exponentially. And what is actually driving this exponential? feature driven approach is basically the software which is inside. So if I just give some statistics of the software which is driving inside an automotive car, or I will say luxury car is now currently this 1.8 million lines of code. Can you imagine the kind of code we are introducing in our luxury car is much more than a fighter jet, which is currently at 5.7. It has raised to 7.2 uh, million lines of code. So the Car innovation is in part with a lot of changes and nuances which is bringing in with our customer needs. We are the customer for the car. So if I just narrate a short story, we, we started with the journey of Maruti 800. And now when we are talking about the SUVs and the other uh, top OEMs, they are bringing innovation with number of features. Now it was only the mechanical entity initially. Then we started with power steering. Then we started with uh, adaptive cruise control. We have started with ADAS. Then we have started with uh, infusing the information with the cyber aspects of it, where we would want to unlock and uh, also switch on the AC and so on. So what is this bringing in? We are bringing in the new uh, energy in terms of uh, different aspects of human, what human wants to do with the car. And you can see how the innovations are happening. So it is a ever growing enriching with features, which is not going to stop. We are be going to be greedy more and more as we start seeing the collaboration of industry 4.0, that we will be growing much more larger than what features that we are having. So on that note, uh, I would like to say emphasize, software is the inner part in which people are driving features and we are not shying away, we are using it. At the same time, we should be aware of when so many features are being aligned with the software, there should be a synergy between mechanical and software team. If any of this system breaks, the entire system goes for a regression, uh, recall of the vehicle and so on, which we'll be talking about in short while. So this is something which we need to take it in a priority in terms of what has been driving the industry. And if I just flash a screen uh, where we, I'm sure that if you look at this one, somewhere or the other, you have been connected in terms of identifying ISO 26262 to be having the safety norms to be implemented in your organization. It can be ASPICE, it can be Industry 4.0, it can be your traceability, compliance. So you, you just name it. This industry is equipped with all the aspects and concept and innovations that they are looking forward for. I'm sure that even digital thing, digital that people have started discussing about it, forums are being arranged. And then there are discussion that who can facilitate this environment? 
there should be someone and then people say okay let's work with micro um, let's work with um, ibm let's work with uh, the different business partners let's work with the suppliers and there is a heterogeneous of two when this is coming to climate we want to use best of the best tools now how it is can be achieved is something we will look into our further slides and digging inside more um, objectual challenges in terms of automotive industry i just listed out few i'm sure that all of them gets connected and you can add yours if i missed out anything it's a, a two way communication and two way learning so here complexity as i just mentioned that uh, we have mechanical tools and software work together like we are working on systems of systems so if a requirement has been captured for adaptive cruise control system for any braking system it has to go all the way from the mechanical entity to the ecus and to the software all three has to work together visibility is the utmost priority if anyone makes any changes are you having a traceability view our dashboard which will show you the engineers where they stand what are the priority they are going to take it forward in this particular implementation agility is as soon as something breaks can you fix it can you trace it can you document it is something which everybody wants to know collaboration with not only within the team but with the suppliers with different oems we want to collaborate quality comes into the highest as i said all the points over here is pretty much uh, everybody wants everything in terms of quality i would like to narrate two things in it one is reuse version management automation people have been doing a lot of automation in terms of tool integration points and making sure that nothing gets break down in terms of delivery deployment and so on but still there are some changes are happening so we'll talk about the new technology a new architecture which is being laid out in the organization and laid out in the forums of um, collaboration across different heterogeneous vendors tool i would like to let me call it that like that and then let's see how we are going to address those regulatory compliance as we were just discussing about 1.8 million lines of code is uh, uh, is already available then we want to make sure it is compliance to the regulatory standards of aspis we are making sure autosar is also followed these are different aspects of automation which has been brought in knowledge cannot be just kept in word documents anymore it has to be shared as a wikipedia so that in 1200 hours if management makes changes to a, a delivery process in 1200 01r it has to be given to the entire organization how you are going to establish is it via email no it is not possible so you may have to have a kind of a place holder where you can do the documentation and it is published on the pages local to your internet and is accessible to everyone do we have a solution we have a solution in the market and i would like to highlight when it comes safety and security it can't be much more emphasized that it is need of the hour when so much of uh, the cross knowledge is happening so much of team is collaborating i'm not talking about just a in house tool but i'm talking about a heterogeneous tool and the people knowledge it is going beyond exponentially to manage the challenges and manage the different stakeholders so safety and security in terms of in buying the guidance tools are already been depicted how these tools are helping us as a holistic picture innovation as uh, um, sunil um, uh, just mentioned the innovation of connected cars into the market and he was also mentioning that this pandemic is making us to learn more and more and making us to see on webinars we are seeing the collaboration this is the collaboration platform where we can now sitting at our place we can collaborate with multiple people and we can the the sky is the limit when it comes to collaboration now innovation when i talk about here in digital thread how we are going to stitch it is this platform helps us to connect to the heterogeneous tool that is what i'm going to also discuss in couple of sites so digital thread and digital twin are hand in hand goes and in when it comes to automotive industry all these three department has to be fulfilling the needs last but not the least if everything goes successful they will say that performance scalability your solution can enterprisely can be widened can we work with a small team can we work with a larger team can we handle 20000 developers can we handle much more than that so we need to have a scalable platform in this particular uh, collaboration piece 
So we do have that capability and we will be talking about it. Having said that, so many uh, concerns are there, but people are successfully delivering. I'm very happy to see that. And in today's paper, as you were been also seeing, the local SIs like Wipro has backed a project of 250 million. As I say, it is there in the papers. So there is a lot of market potential. There is a lot of learning. There is a lot of innovation which is happening. And we are at the right time at the right place. Somebody said IoT means India of tomorrow. So that means we are in the right place to basically grab that opportunity and take it forward. Now, in terms of getting this software driving so much of innovation, there are also pitfalls. In terms of, you can see 4.8 million lines of um, vehicles were recalled because of some food control um, system got having a software bug. Then similarly on the truck, malfunctioning of the airbags, then the camera and the anti-locking system and collision system. So we need to have a robust system which can basically collaborate across the domain, give a single point of truth, single point of source of truth so that everybody's in line with what has been written in a given time is being propagated to the corresponding discipline at the same time. How it is possible? How we can break down this ice is not having a stale information. How we are going to do it, we are going to see it. Now, in this world of uh, um, automotive industry, as I was mentioning every time, the three discipline, discipline, they have their own pockets of tools, which can be from the ALM word, which is us, IBM, and that can be PLM word. It can be from anyone. So can there be a synergy? Can we have a connection between ALM and PLM? Can we have some integrators? We do have integrators on demand, which can help us to integrate the ALM and PLM world. And as you can see on the screen, the goal part that we want to bring in the digital part. Where is the ELM stands? Where the CAD designs are standing? How we are connecting to the bill of material? And then as Sunil said, we are going beyond this PLM word and saying that connected vehicles. And in connected vehicle story, you can be as, uh, as innovative in ideas in terms of switching on your ACs, uh, switch off your Music system, you want the, cool, um, the, uh, the other parameters of the car to be satisfied in terms of airbags are functioning and so on. So you can just go and explore with a number of features. And that is what is happening in this world. So on that note, if I want to say someone, okay, let's start doing some kind of checkpoints. What are things are needed in any of the automotive development? These are something the checkpoint everybody in the development world wants to do. One is proof that you are developing all the necessary product in terms of you're not skipping in this particular pressurized work, you are taking care of it. Evidences for the best practices which have been followed by ASPICE or ISO 2662 in terms of standard, are you giving the documentation? Traceability across the portfolio, across your artifacts from the requirement, from the design, from your, um, from your test cases and also versioning of it, um, showing the documented proof. Are you showing the, um, the things have been followed correctly? Are you taking the reuse component by version variant of it? Are you tagging it and so on? These are the things what industry is looking for. We have challenges ahead, but we have solutions also in that. And when we talk about all this thing, how, industry is actually building their development tool chain by heterogeneous, right? When I say heterogeneous, I'm not incorporated all the tools, but some of the places still people are working with their Word and Excel sheet to capture the requirements. They do the designing somehow in terms of Word document creating block. Then they are working with your testing within Excel sheet, your test plan, test cases, and then we have some configuration management tools. So. Keeping in that note, can we basically always planning, fix the traceability, fix certain things. We are creating like managed ID, something new comes in, we just incorporate it. So if there is anything beyond this, we can look at the scope where we can give a structure which is seamless, traceable, and a single point of truth when the things are being connected rather than copying the data. If there is anything possible, Yes, it is possible. We have a solution in IBM, which is called as engine lifecycle management. And 
cut across all the discipline. Now, let me put this pie perspective in context. So, when we talk about our requirement management solution, as everybody knows uh, in the automotive, aerospace, and medical, this word called dose is not new to them. This is a, a legacy product which has been there for three decades. And what we have done with the new generation, we have taken the, all the concept and features of DOS Classic into DOS Next Generation. We are maintaining both the products and we are making sure it is using the new technology hub or architecture to incorporate the future. And over here, what we are also doing is we are not letting go that you should do a fresh start. If you have legacy Word document and Excel sheet to capture the requirements, you can bring it. So we are going with your in-house implementation and uh, holding the hands and taking it forward as one step. When we talk about modeling, Rajini. Over here, I'm differentiating from this. I'm working only on the software. I'm not talking about the mechanical design, CAD design that is different, PLM, and I just mentioned the previous slide how we can do the connection. Coming to the design aspect, systems engineering is becoming like the default standard when you are building an automotive application. I'm sure that there are many books being written on model-based systems engineering. And something we from IBM and also not only promoting our products in terms of standards and unifying the using the ONG object management group standard implementation of UML system and AutoStar, but we are also making sure that we are giving a process guideline like Harmony. Again, Harmony is there in terms of a stitched way of designing a complex system, which you can use it, which is available in that chain. Coming back to uh, the testing solution. Again, testing solution, people use it Word document, Excel sheet. Again, we have a facility to import and take it forward. So we are not leaving you high and dry that you should start fresh, but you can use your legacy tool and you can bring inside the system and use the uh, collaboration approach. Similarly, people are using Git, they are using SVN, they are using Excel sheet, all that can be brought in. And once we have established a good ELM solution, then people definitely want to document it. So you can generate document. There are static documents. There are dynamic documents, which I'll talk about it in a short while. So as uh, we speak, and as the um, audience are from the different domain, so they can be thinking that, oh, this is a software-centric discussion. No, it is not a software-centric discussion. The star marks are the tools which you can take it forward as we say, whether it is a mechanical team or electrical team, they can still, instead of using their Word and Excel sheet, at least they can get that collaboration piece working. You can get your test planning working. You can get your configuration working. You may keep uh, the modeling side aside because it can be a mixed match of it. But having said that, systems engineering can build the gap by your systems modeling language, block diagrams, and so on. But as we say, we can basically bring in these three aspects in our current deployment and take the advantage of domain neutral tools. Okay, I was mentioning about the new architecture and I was talking about the platform on which our tools are being developed. That is being done by OSLC. OSLC is an org which defines how the tool vendor should expose the data from the requirements to connect to a design, or connect to a configuration, connect to a PLM solution, connect to an IoT devices. So there is a extensive uh, uh, spec being given by OSLC, how the data has to be exposed so that the other person can consume. I would urge each and everyone to go ahead and see at the OSLC org and see that how they have also given the specs for PLM solution. <laughs> <coughs> Sorry, PLM solution, how they can extract and they can encompass with the existing tool chain. So there's a whole list of specifications has been driving and we have re-architected our entire ELM on OSLC so that there's a single point of truth. You don't copy the data from one tool to another. That is the biggest uh, learning which we also had when we were doing the OSLC because our traditional previous one was copying, but this one made us to that make sure that you are always seeing the single point of truth. Let's get in 
inside uh, a single uh, sunil uh, i'm sorry to interrupt you ashok here uh, actually we have some poll questions for other, uh, for the audience if we can run some of them right now okay okay so, and this is a logical time to basically ask the poll so yes yes you can Hi everyone. So here are some questions for you. Uh, you can reply within a minute. Uh, whatever you think about this technology, the automation, AI-based engineering. If you are using, you can select first option. Otherwise, you can select for the second or third. Around 80 seconds are left. Uh, sorry, 40 seconds are left. I request you to please share your responses. Only 10 seconds are left. <laughs> uh, Sunil sir, we have this response. If you have any comment on this. Uh, I'm not able to see the poll uh, results. Do I need to have it in one particular screen? Yeah, uh, Sunil sir, the question was, are you currently using or intend to use automated AI based engineering life cycle management solution for your projects? So 33% people are saying that they are already using it. 39 people are intent to use and rest 28% are not sure when uh, they will start using this technology. Okay, thank you. I think Ashok, that's a great input. I do have an AI infused solution in our portfolio. So probably when I'm on that slide, I will emphasize more on it. Okay. So this data is definitely useful. Yeah. Yeah. So once you, you are done with your slides, we have another uh, set of questions. We have uh, two more poll questions. Uh, one is about ELM and other is uh, about IBM rules. So just uh, sure. let me know whenever is the right time. Sure. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. So now uh, I was just talking about in a nutshell in terms of your um, uh, in terms of your uh, solution offering from ELM, you can see in the right in front of the screen. I just mentioned about our dose next generation. I mentioned about the modeling quality aspect collaboration piece. And in the screen, what I want you to focus on that we are giving you out of the box standard templates. Our work item templates like do 170 b for aerospace, ISO 262 for automotive industry, IEs for medical system, and also from the um, from the uh, utility systems that we are following the uh, very extensive standard templates which are there available for you to use. And we also have template for agile practices, safe, traditional, and so on, which you can use. So in this slide, I would uh, rather you to take this two points, one is the standards what we are supporting, what are the frameworks we are helping, and two more additional points, which I want to add to the ones which I just mentioned, probably four points in terms of the standards, in terms of the process template. One is about the best practices. This one I will just discuss in a while, and also the real-time reporting. These two, I will be subsequent slide, I will be elaborating it. But this is one screen. This product set can be bought independently or can be bought collectively. I would suggest take a collective approach. Having said that, we have customers who have taken step by step as many steps by seeing first the success and requirement, then going to the configuration, then going to the quality, then putting in the modeling is up to you. So we have customers who have taken that approach. We have customers who are taking the holistic approach by keeping a mind share of how they want to tackle the compliance sheet, how they are going to uh, ta uh, tackle the traceability impact analysis. It is up to you take a choice. Now let me get into uh, each and individual tool, but in a very high level, uh, as each topic which I'm, I'm discussing right now, each slide can go to an hour or so, 
but I'm just keeping the highlight points over. So what you're seeing on the right hand side of the screen is a real web-based application of those next generation. As you can scroll through the cruise control operation modes, how you have been documenting, it is exactly the same. We are making sure that you can do so you can organize the requirements, you can link the requirements, you can uh, uh, do the traceability with your, uh, uh, with your design element, with your configuration element, with the testing part of it, and you can do the baselining, variant management part of it, you can do the requirement review, all in one single tool, all in the collaboration base. And each atomic requirement, each row, what you're seeing, you can add additional attribute to it in terms of telling it is a functional requirement, mechanical requirement, electrical requirement. It is up to you to create this view and also give access to your engineers, access to your suppliers, access to your OEMs. So it is a hosted on there, but you can be hosted on SaaS model, it can be hosted on on-prem. So you have intranet kind of a arrangement, you can do it. You can also work extending it with VPN and so on. You can give access. So that any given time, engineers, OEMs, and suppliers are seeing the same text with a restricted access, and you can get the beauty of it. The what we have done, not only we are doing the requirement management as a best practices, which has been uh, been our legacy work for 30 years, but what we have done is we have infused AI inside inside our portfolio. This is the first of the kind which we have introduced in the requirement solution. We are going to extend to our testing, our configuration management and modeling. It is currently in research. So let me talk about our new entry of AI into requirement management solution. Uh, before I get into this, let me tell you the pain points from where it's the entire solution started off. The pain points were when we write requirements right now, the engineers are writing requirement. They can be knowing the best practices of in course designing how to write the requirement, but there will be additionally, they may not have awareness. So you may to have to do a peer review. I mean, you have to do a, a systems engineer guys to tell you, okay, with respect to system, this requirement is right, with respect to software, this is right or not, and so on. So there are a lot of peer reviews happen in the requirement phase. And this is something vital because everybody in the industry and you knows that if you fix the problem earlier, later on, it will be uh, beneficial for you. Otherwise, cost will can go exponentially uh, high when you start fixing it. So we have introduced AI in requirement, keeping that in view, where we are taking care of in cozy best and the practices for writing the requirements, requirements, and what you are seeing the score right now, 70 and nice graphics over here is, when you write the requirement, you select the requirements inside those next generation, it will parse the requirement with the NLP natural language processing. And if we have in uh, propriety, what's in, analytical capabilities, which will give you a score of 70, saying that you have to reach from zero to 100 and you are at 70 mark. We don't leave it over there. We explain why you got 70. It is an ambiguous requirement. What are the keywords within the statement was wrong? And then we also talk about negative requirements. If you are not aware, it will give you a kind of a write up. What do you mean by ambiguous requirement? You can read the text and correct the statement. And as we speak again, we are extending this AI capability to identify duplicate requirement, conflicting requirements. And we are extending this AI capability to you as a user hand, where you can define your own rules, you can define your own NLP on a service-based engagement, and it can cater to not only English, but Germany from and other uh, languages. So it is all in your hands, which will be available for you from September 24th, on-prem solution will be available. As of now, when we speak, it is available on SaaS offer. So it is all you have right now, which we can give you from the AI part. Second part is the modeling side. So in modeling, there are various tools, which I just mentioned about AutoSAR, you can mention about MATLAB models, you can mention of something else, okay? Here, we not only follow the open standard like OMG, to satisfy your systems engineering practice by SysML. We not only design the system, but we can simulate and tell you at front whether the system will work in the real environment or not. The, we are in the stage, we cannot experiment the end of the product. We have to do it much more. So Gratchity is a tool which can help you to basically identify the gaps earlier in the cycle. It just generates 100% production, 100 production code. We have Mistra compliance. 
and we have lot many things if you have legacy uh, uml tools which have written some models and you want to import inside uh, actually you can do it with the xmi capability if you want to extend this thought process of design thinking in terms of your designing with the heterogeneous domains i would like to put a screen over here in this model based system engineering what you are seeing right now how the requirements functional architecture logical system hardware deployment architecture everything can be scoped within the system designing logic with the block diagrams and we have helping guides like how many booklet which goes through around 150 pages or so on which tells you step by step how to do the requirement analysis how to do the design thinking how to divide the system how to basically build the system we have books around it so if you you can send me email, I can share the details, and there are a lot many things are available. So this can be seen as a 360 degree angle in terms of what is the pieces which have been connected, how it is getting impacted. So impact analysis is the crucial part, because if you are making any changes, how it is going to impact, we have solutions to take care of that, which I will be talking it. Just to give you a glimpse of it, how massive the system can handle and how easily you can navigate through the systems. Coming to the test management, as I said, you can import your legacy Word document Excel sheet, and it can give a collaboration platform to your requirement piece connected to a test case, to your design, to your configuration management. If anything doesn't work, you have an intro design that it got blocked, it got passed, and it is influenced you by having an auth sign. So basically, this will help you an indicative measure that you can take corrective actions. And it's a collaboration platform. We had DNG. We have test management solution, we have practical model, all can be hosted over the intranet to access across your organization in a secure protocol. And we should not left behind the configuration management piece. So you can you can tailor the workflow, you can alter the plans, you can create the task, you can make sure who is doing what task, you can edit it, you can add more risk factor to it, you can add more columns to it uh, to make more cohesive solution for your dashboard, how you want to look into it. And all the products, what I'm talking, is traceable, bi-directional, can access the information based on the user right. Not everybody can see, based on the user right. So we are taking care of the nuances. This one, I mentioned about the best practices in our high pitch, where I mentioned about the V picture. This is what I was talking about in 1200 hours you have some specification need modified in IOC 262 and you want to deliver the changes in 101 hour. With the, have, uh, with the concept of method composer, where you can document the roles, responsibility, the workflow, what need to be followed for a specific OEM. I'm just naming few. For Mercedes, you have to follow this standard. For your dime, um, for um, Jaguar Land Rover, you have to follow this standard. If you're working with Conti, if you're working with uh, Bosch. So these, these are nothing but different processes which you are doing right now with your own documentation. But then it has been scattered. It has been having something may not be updated, but having a method composer where you define your processes and everything in single place, you can across access across the people. It's like wiki pages. If somebody wants to know, okay, what is auto SAR? I will basically type in Google and wiki pages go that yeah, wiki pages I cannot replace with this, but this is going beyond creating tasks, exporting the tasks which have been associated to a configuration management. There are some new changes and nuances have been brought in. As I said, each slide can talk about one art. So for this moment, I'm just stopping here. You can look into it to capture your entire knowledge center in one place, and everybody has access to the information right when it gets changed. And you can just circulate a simple mail. Once we have done all this collaboration of requirement, design, testing, and configuration management, everything is good. Management asked the last question, can you give me a documentation? Yes. We can provide you the documentation in Word document. It can be uh, customized for your needs. It can be in the form of Word, PDF, HTML document. And we have nice screen, which is the ADAS, which is you are seeing here in terms of uh, different tabs, which you can see compliance who are being doing it. What is the kind of solution we have, cruise control model. So yes, single dashboard, partition with different modules, 
and you can see right in front of you all the data points who are the engineer working where are we standing this gives you a very strong collaboration piece which you used to take to validate a single test case six weeks you can basically narrow down to three days and if you're finding a bug which takes three days you can narrow down to 30 seconds by having this traceability if an error happens which is the requirements get affected and so on this is the power of our tool which is based on the oslc platform which can integrate anything so this gives you a very strong edge and all these things are based on the link set data so oslc is about link set data we have implemented a tool inside tool the old name is called realm the new name is called insights about it what you are seeing on the screen is a real time dashboard which we can color code it according to your choice and see a physical block connecting to a logical block and the operation and the activity to the use cases so the plm world goes and connect to the software world of plm and you can see how it is getting impacted back side of the screen over here is showing a kind of impact analysis tree so this is something an engineer something uh, a, a, a top management want to know if something getting changed how it is getting impacted if i ask you to do this graph analysis right with your current system in place it may take time but you will do it but over here it is just in seconds it can establish the relationship if there is a relationship not been established to the other logical block you can see clearly there is a gap analysis why it is happening and this is something which is very powerful with our solution which works on the links index data and we have extended this logic to create his spice dashboard which talks about the work items for the system requirements or software architecture being captured in your uh, workflow management solution in uh, our item and then you can extract the data organized in the format in which the his spice is basically capturing you can customize it you can see the data on the fly navigating to and forth this is such a powerful one which you can think of moving to the next one uh this is a logical break for the polling and ashok you have a poll question for the audience here thanks sunit yes we have a poll question here uh, the mm -hmm. question is are you aware about the ibm solutions for elm engineering life cycle management so three options are available yes no and partially so i request audiences to please uh, select their options you have around 40 seconds About five seconds are left. Okay, so Sunil, here is some interesting inputs. 36% people are saying yes, they know about IBM solutions for ELM. 27% don't know about this solution, and 36% uh, are aware about this solution, but they are partially know this solution so if you can elaborate this part so that is good that to know that uh, um, our team uh, our audience are having mixed uh, uh, user experience i'm sure that uh, the people who are already using are seeing the reaping the benefit of this traceability and dashboard the people who are aware of it some part of it now they should be able to see that there are other parts which they can stitch in in terms of uh, connecting an ecosystem as I said, the entire portfolio here has been divided into five flavors. Requirements, if you already have it, very good. Then design, then you are, have the configuration management. A single tool, basically take care of your project planning, change management, build management, release management, everything, right? And then the test management solution and documentation. So any given time, you can, uh, if you have used only one, you can connect others and vice versa. And I'm not saying that you cannot uh, connect other third parties. You can, as I said, 
this entire system is based on the OSLC platform. If you have other solutions, you can integrate. And some of the point solutions, if you look at those, has a lot of presence in the market. So if there is a wire harnessing system from Meta Graphics, you already have integration bus. You have CAD CAM design, you already have an integration with them. So if you take a point to point solution, which has a legacy of 30 years, you already have third party vendors who are creating the adapters, even Trident, even others in the business partner fraternity are creating add-ons and integration bus. So we are flexible and uh, as uh, thank you for sharing your feedback. And if you have any questions, how to go about from here, you are free to ask us or uh, you can reach out to us. Okay, thank you Ashok. And I will move on to my slide. So now the ones which I just mentioned is somebody will say that, oh, I have seen in other ALM tool and so on, but we are focusing on the compliance part of it. We are much more driven by compliance industry. And there are different tools are there. We don't deny, we coexist. And uh, we want you to use best of two worlds. And wherever this surprise the need with others, please use it. Wherever you think that this is something which I want to incorporate, we can use that. So I want to just talk about some differential factor. So when it comes to the holistic picture, we are talking about requirements, data link point with the architecture. We are talking about the code and documentation. We are talking about test management. Once we get this set working, then we want to get the work item working across domain. If this is not enough, we want to cut, get the report across. We want the report of SRS, SDD. We want to report our ISDs, and we want to report the traceability. We want to get the report of impact analysis, gap analysis. All that is in your fingertips in terms of driving that reports, giving that capability, um, compliance metrics, and so on. All that is available in a single shot. So it is up to you how you want to uh, take this forward. So this is available. The second one I want to highlight in terms of the differential factor is version variant component. So you can have 150% of your features and how you divide those features into variant parts. So that can be also can be established. We call this variant management system with our component called global configuration. And this has been already been used by Mercedes-Benz. The screen what you are showing here is <coughs> they have built the product line and then they have created the variants on it. So this is a detailed topic of its own, how you manage the variant. Now, variant management is not only on the configuration management piece. Let me correct it. It is from the requirements which are being going inside the Mercedes Benz. It is the test cases which are associated with this requirement. This is the design models can be CAD design, can be system modeling design, can be a human design system, all being bundled together with the configuration management piece, all together is taking as one set and the variants of it. So people say that, okay, I will create a folder dump and then create, no, we are not doing that. We are only taking the delta from one variant to another variant, which is an efficient way of using the memory and also making sure that all this mundane work, what you are doing earlier can be reduced I can say more than half. When I'm saying delta change, this is not even, um, you are getting only delta changes to what you have been adding the code and adding the requirements. So if we are doing a high level of traceability, high level of governance on this. So this is something very unique to us. Second one, we are not only providing you the solutions, but we are also trying to map which solution fits to what standard and what all places the tool are responsible. For simple example, IOSU 26262, when it comes to the management of functional safety, workflow management tool of ELM will suffice. Similarly, the concept where it gets stored. Similarly, for product development, hardware and software. Wherever we are fitting in the tool, we are allocating. When it comes to hardware, definitely the different um, PLM tool chain, are, a different uh, aspect has to be taken. With the OSLC, you can connect and you can take it forward. So um, we are making sure where we can and how we can collaborate with that. We also did a mapping of the ASPIs, wherein the entire system practices, the supplier practices, the software engineering, each and every phases, what tool, what it's capable of, we have connected to it. So if you face any challenges in terms of the phase, which tools we are here to basically 
giving a helping hand and we can bring in the worldwide expert we can bring in our own uh, experience onto the table and try to make sure that we both win together in this journey of compliance industry so when we do the mapping what we are also doing you is we are giving you six six powerful things one is we are providing you the templates from the dose template from the a spice we are providing you the rapsley profiling as you can see the profiling for uml system and autosar you can have a customized profiling which we are providing we are providing workflow templates work item breakdown structures we are providing the templates for test management we are providing the reports which are aligned to the compliance industry and we are also giving you the process contents which you normally being uh, captured by the worldwide experts but we are also doing it all the six things are at your disposal to basically use engraves and also use the capability so if you are a new entrant to this automotive world then you have this platform to basic to elevate at least where the different oems are thinking and what they think you are at least in part with what their thinking strategies are and you are already the user of it this template will help you that if i have missed out anything if i want to add so it is a both way to win win for us one is giving a stepping stone another within this uh, our best practices of almost a consortium of uh, around 300 to 400 companies where we have extracted the energy of them and put forward this templates you can use it it is up to you how you want to take this asset forward and as people say this is good but anybody is using yes we have a lot of case studies which you can also go and youtube it there are a lot of case studies on elm how it has been deployed i want to just highlight one one report where we are other people are also there we are not shy of showing anything we are already black and white where we are heading towards it how many engineers we can handle with this platform complex platform as you can see 1.8 million lines of code has been maintained on the you know, platform with almost 20000 engineers working across the globe we can actually make an impact in terms of uh, usage of the tool and there are again success stories from the mustis as he says that the feature has exponentially been increased and we have to take care of that nuances to do the integration they are able to do it when it comes to conti there are 10000 plus engineer and we have to do a collaboration platform we can do uh, we can suffice that need when it comes to jaguar and our case studies they say that we are talking about curtailing their uh, uh, their testing cycle by 90% and i'm amazed to uh, share this because they did a very detailed very regressive poc where they have come up with this kind of strategy of uh, curtailing 6 week of testing been reduced to 3 and 3 days has been reduced to 30 seconds actually whatever i'm saying it is there available on the youtube and you can read about this case study so fantastic thing which has happened uh, using our portfolio and very happy to see that customers are uh, reaping the advantage of elm we do have other case stories to other domain this particular topic was on only on the automotive industry but we are very prevalent in aerospace prevalent in electronics prevalent in uh, banking and gsi and so on so you just name it we are there and it is vice versa with the other vendors too but we are taking a edge over them by having this compliance and every aspect which has been uh, been just mentioned during the session and just to recap on uh, what we just talked about on the elm we are talking about managing the changes in one single platform having a collaboration dashboard quality distributed team and agile planning and development and driving the ecosystem and value with not only with your gumban charts but with a shortest job first kind of scenarios so you can customize it so these are my three takes one is traceability as accessing the system across the information domain for different discipline and collaboration piece so on this note i'll go to my last slide thanking everyone to stay with us and um, sailing the journey what we have uh, been able to do uh, during this course of um, um, elm development our portfolio and how we have used the legacy uh, framework we have extended with the new technologies so that it is much more flexible to incorporate if you have any questions you can reach out to me and rajat 
and just my LinkedIn profile. So if you have any questions, I'm more than happy to take it up. Uh, we are sure that we are always uh, <laughs> uh, taking much more than uh, what has been decided. We are hoping that the uh, if the session was insightful and you have got the input. Ashok, um, I just open up for questions if there are, or you want to take up the next speaker. Yes, yes. So uh, we have one more poll questions. Uh, uh, we can run it uh, right now. Okay. So this question is, uh, are you currently using IBM doors, AI based or similar solution for, for other OEM OSP in your project? So audiences, you have around uh, 50 seconds. You can share your, your inputs with us. So if you are using IBM doors, please let us know. Ten seconds. So, Sunil, uh, in this, we have got only ten percent in yes. Seventy percent are saying no. They don't. Uh, they are not using uh, IBM doors and 20% are not known about this solution. Your thoughts? Okay, so which is, uh, I would rather say that this is good to know that uh, we have a, some amount of awareness and people who are not aware now, they should be definitely taking some input from this session in terms of how they look into the requirement management solution and they can go back and they can see in terms of how they are managing their IDs for the traceability, how they are doing the review process, how they are collaborating across the requirements to different disciplines, how they are basically maintaining the, uh, the, um, the information single point of truth. If these are the things which they are seeking any challenges, they should definitely look into our solution. And uh, definitely, uh, I'm not, not saying that requirement solution, but we have different attributes in the Excel sheets to see the priority of it, whether which domain it belongs to, functional safety, or it is mechanical, critical software, functional, non-functional requirement, and templates around it. So you can look into it in a very holistic way, and we can provide you the checklist how people have been successful in using it. So as I said, it's my email ID and contact. You can free to uh, email me and call me. Uh, on this topic and we can discuss further on it. So that's it from my side. Um, uh, anything else? Uh, Ashok, on the chat and queries are there, uh, we move on to the next presenter. Uh, I, I guess we, we can uh, go with uh, Vivek. He has some presentations to share with us. So Vivek, sure. over to you. Hi everyone, can you see me? Yes, we can see yes, you we and can we can see you. your presentation. Okay, great. Hi everyone. Uh, so thanks to Sunil for his extensive and good overview about the IBM ELM, IBM Engineering Lifecycle Management Solution, which is actually an integrated solution for systems and software development as you have understood now. Now, one of the thing that comes actually many times to our mind is that how, if I adopt this, if I have to adopt this, if I want to adopt this, if I have to use this, if my team has to in fact learn about this set of tools, how much time it will take? It is definitely that uh, as Sunil has mentioned, there are lots of assets available. 
but we want to reduce further your learning cycle we want to actually accelerate your the overall deployment and the adoption of ibm elm and that's basically important actually apart from you making a purchase decision about such kind of solutions so what i'm going to talk about is briefly about how trident helps and enables the customers to adopt this set of tools and not only adopt this set of tools but improve overall delivery improve overall time to value of this particular your software development cycle so we discussed a lot of things in today's uh, presentation by from sunil at uh, one of the main thing is that ibm elm is a collaborative multidisciplinary development kind of environment in which you can use this yes there are lots of uh, definitely it is uh, it has a lots of things related to the software development but there are some of the solutions like a doors which is a most important for requirements management across the disciplines obviously your software requirements and uh, hardware requirements or the mechanical requirement they together form a product and that's where the doors comes in and there also the rational quality assistance and the test management all these factors come here and another important part is the systems if you are a systems engineer you can actually model the system and view that simulate the system and view the overall integrated approach as such so important thing about ibm elm uh, as sunil has described certain features and the certain basically characteristics like in context collaboration life cycle traceability continuous improvement you can do and helps it enables you to do a more and more innovation it fosters greater visibility and collaboration in multidisciplinary and complex software development that's a basically summary i will put it here it is backed by the community which is a jazz.net and you can in fact uh, view this particular customer success also and also lots of articles on this ibm elm uh, in this particular jazz.net community now how trident actually helps you trident enables the team to be in fact on top of this complexity of developing smart and connected product using this ibm elm that's basically what we come into picture and here uh let's look at let's revisit where where we actually will start with you where the customers are actually adopting let's say doors for requirements definition and management it's a when you are decided that okay i want to use this doors for requirements definition and management your layout your structure of this particular requirements right now it may be in excel how basically it can be easily adopted into doors how your practices can be in fact defined and configured within doors is what is the first important thing that we can work you with so how we do that i will just uh, uh, talk about a few steps that we take to really drive this particular journey and uh, that's a way uh, that's a uh, one part of it second part of it is that many it's a most important thing is that the, each of your team member has to in fact become a uh, should see this particular set of tools as his own actually and he can even when we start working with you it is a, one of the thing that we do is that we actually build the champions in your team that's the most important it should not be the knowledge should not remain with us we, we build the champions in you and so what happens is that your analyst will become not only the just the uh, one who can write better requirements or elicit better requirements but he can actually guide you how basically i can collaborate with the other disciplines very easily using doors so he can become a uh, maybe a coordinator and a point of contact for coordinating this particular requirements across the disciplines because requirements once you define as at, at a top level or uh, for example if you are developing a uh, some part of the car there will be three different aspects may come up one some things for the mechanical some things for the software some things for the electronics who will manage this particular at across the disciplines so that's the one important part and then after that there is also who will manage the requirements at the software level so this all these three levels different levels and how basically integrated requirements management can be done is what we work with you uh, with you 
and obviously there is a traceability across the disciplines within that particular development actually so requirements is a one aspect another is a test management so you need to collaborate with the testing team also not just the requirement and analyst in the, of the other multidisciplinary system like a mechanical kind of thing now one of the important part uh, sunil mentioned is about the configurations now what is the configuration so he talked about the product variant there is a product line management and uh, suppose that i am developing a one car where there is a one particular infotainment system and i want to use a different variant of that infotainment system in another car now this particular variant of that infotainment system is how i can manage it easily because it all starts with the requirements and that requirements uh, it is not just the software code or the library but the requirements change because one uh, luxury cl uh, class car may have a different infotainment system whereas uh, some uh, other variant like a uh, economy class or maybe the suvs kind of thing may have a different uh, requirements of infotainment system and how basically i can define this particular product lines and uh, product variants is what we uh, actually help you with defining this what is called as a global configuration management using ibm elm so ibm elm uh, uh, it's a as sunil has mentioned it's a huge topic and we can discuss that but overall basically the you have one particular product line for which you have defined the requirements you have basically implemented that infotainment system you have delivered that infotainment system now uh, after testing it obviously and uh, then you have decided that at some point that i want to go for a different variant of this infotainment system of my different car luxury car then you can start with this particular base and then you can go ahead uh, to the next level where you can say that now this infotainment system will be extended with this 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 features you have based with certain requirements you have based with this particular requirements and uh, you have defined the global configuration which will be used uh for the next variant that i'm going to build so overall basically you can work in parallel and uh, there will be multiple development streams will be there you can have the uh, you you should not be working on a one products variant but you should be able to work on a different product variant itself and that's where the ibm elm comes into picture and how this is where the uh, trident actually helps you and enables you to deliver your quality products easily so uh, what are the key service drivers for uh, ibm uh, elm key, key service drivers from trident high performance deployment value driven incremental adoption and measured management and optimization and as i mentioned that uh, we actually enable, we definitely uh, enable the team for the better collaboration we actually configure the tools for the better collaboration improve the visibility and continuously deliver quality release and controlled product component variants so what are the steps through which uh, uh, and what is the road map that we take to deliver uh, to enable you and to lead the overall early business outcome we first understand the customer's goals and the constraints we understand analyze your current practices we uh, look at the current tool usage integration requirements are found out uh, it should not it need not be only the within the ibm elm integration but uh, they are already integrated tools but if you have any other third party tool that you are using and you want to integrate it we understand those integration requirements we understand the challenges that you are facing and then after that we basically identify and prioritize how basically ibm ela capability should be rolled out for example if the pain point is more from the perspective of the requirement that the requirements are not elicited properly or may not be uh, it, they are not basically propagated across the disciplines appropriately then those uh, capabilities should be deployed first and adopted first that's the approach that we take it and there we actually take a, a very uh, important actually uh, consideration that we give it uh, where we said that okay how each of this stakeholder is going to use your set of tools so there is a something called as the usage model implementation so we define the usage model from the perspective of each of the stakeholder and that actually helps us to design in such a way that there is a seamless kind of thing though there we reduce the rework we reduce your unproductive and unplanned work because of this 
and that's a basically most important thing uh, the most important uh, step that we take it after understanding your current requirement and analyzing your current requirement so there are two main service offering and obviously a key service offering as such we can say one is that uh, ibm elm and devops deployment and adoption services and ongoing management of the ibm elm so these are the two main streams where the uh, we uh, as part of the initial one we assess and plan to define deployment architecture and an option roadmap we uh, act, do the certain kind of foundation what we call it sometimes it is people call it as a pilot because you should not be rolling out across the teams together or across the organization uh, so you have to do it in a step by step manner and that's what we call as a wave based uh, approach and this is where the first uh, wave where we do call it as a pilot wave and then we roll out and scale it after that so that's the approach we take and uh, then after that uh, we also uh, actually work with you on the ongoing management and the overall basically elm ad adoption further for the any of the changes that takes place so how trident is helping the customers and how uh, basically defense and government and industry customers are leveraging trident devops expertise we have actually assessed we have set up the ibm elm and the clm solutions as it is earlier used to be called in a single and multi server environment with many customers and we have enabled the teams on so on the ibm elm so tools and adopt the best practices so that's very where we have actually worked with the customer and definitely uh, as as i can say as a overall basically the way that trident has worked with the customer this particular adoption this particular uh, adoption of the ibm elm uh, through our services has actually helped the software practitioners to reduce their unplanned work to reduce their unproductive work and overhead and that's basically what uh, is a uh, what is a contribution of trident as while working with ibm for a long time thank you and uh, appreciate your time and really great being here and i am sure you must have enjoyed this particular session and learned a lot we hope and we will definite are sure to work with you again so thank you those were very engrossing and enlightening sessions it's time to take your questions you can ask your questions by typing in the chat window sunil vivek rajnish anyone can uh, take these up so uh, i think the first question is do you support fta and fmea to capture hazard analysis so answer is yes uh, sneel uh, we do support fta fault tree analysis and mean time to failure with rapidity uh, um, uh, in rapidity so we can define uh, the hazard analysis and all the graphical symbols are available for the user to use it for their own uh, uh mean time to failure and if i may be generated out of the box we do have this on demand profile it's not something comes out of the box but uh if they send us um that they are looking for this uh, profile we will provide them okay so there's another question uh, which is uh, with rhapsody so can you integrate uh, simulink matlab model with rhapsody uh, yes uh, we do have um, integration with matlab models uh, with rhapsody because this is something uh, we have been seeing in automotive industry matlab have been prevalent in using the continuous logic so we do have a capability to import matlab model and do a co simulation in rhapsody so it does uh, work seamlessly and we have youtube videos if somebody wants to know how it is to be done it is all available okay so then there is another question uh, is it possible to customize the report as per the certification agency yes i think who is asking this question uh, he has been aware of the compliance industry and challenges so yes we can customize the report uh, as per the need of the certifying agency uh, so with the help of our report generation tool yes they can do it they can out of the box we do have templates but they will not be compliance to industry but you can customize it yes okay so i think actually we are running out of time so maybe i'll ask one last question and maybe all of you can just give your parting uh, words for the webinar so it's like what would be the typical team size to start using elm 
and uh, are there online material available for elm solutions for learning so you can actually have a team size from 5 to 20000 which i was referring on the call on the session so if, even if the team size is 5 to 10 we can start deploying because we have a lot of small uh, the suppliers who have started minimum with one license each and they have then exponentially increased the license base and when I people may be thinking that if it is a 10 people, do we really make sense? Yes, it, because when you're uh, collaborating with OEMs, big OEMs, and you want to do the data exchange, and if you're talking in their own language, and you become a trusted partner to them because you are talking the same language, you are using the same technology, and they are sure that when it comes to compliance, as one of the statement was, uh, are you maintaining the version variant in a very secured way and trying to take it forward as a incremental development? So in that case, yes, it makes sense to have it. So I would say from five to um, 20,000 more and beyond. So, And as per the materials are concerned, we do have a YouTube channel uh, called IBM uh, User Education, where you can just search for this word and you have all the videos related to each product and it goes like 10 to 15 videos each uh, um, aspects it takes it through thank you so vivek and rajneesh any parting thoughts based on the questions and the poll questions or anything yeah rajneesh please go ahead uh, thanks a lot yeah. it, uh, it's uh, great <laughs> No, no, your, your, your observations are much more valuable here, Vivek. Yeah. So, uh, anyway, yeah. Yeah, please, Vivek, sorry. Yeah, thanks. Thanks a lot to everyone. And it was a, uh, definitely a good to know that some of the questions actually. And one of the uh, points that uh, somebody was mentioning about the enabling, at judge.net, actually, as I showed, I have provided that particular link also. Judge.net is also a good place to actually look at look for certain tutorials and uh, also a lot of basically material where if you want a quick start kind of approach if you want to take jazz.net can also be a good place to go and visit okay so uh, I'd, I'd like to thank everyone for those engrossing ppts and uh, the question and answer session and actually we are totally running out of time otherwise we could have asked many more uh, questions so i would like to thank you sunil vivek and rajneesh once again Thank you for giving your time. Thank you, Sunil, and thank you each and everyone who was joining and connected with us this morning and to extend it to afternoon. So thank you very much once again. Thank you, everyone. Yeah. So uh, on behalf of PC Quest, IBM, and Trident, I would like to thank all our participants today for joining this webinar. We hope you found it useful. And don't forget to fill in the feedback form on your way out. Have a great day, everyone. Bye-bye.